Hello and welcome. Welcome back again to channel 36. And tonight we have a very unique show. Very unique. It's also awesome. And it's Shiro's Entertainment. And we have with us three live mermaids in person. One gentleman who is called Merman and our two ladies. And we're going to ask them all different questions and uh, how they got into this occupation and everything about their mermaid tales and so on and so forth. So on my left, I have Rachel right here Super and Virginia. Hi. Okay, and Virginia is the one that owns Shiro's Entertainment. Okay, what area is that in LA here? Uh, Shiro's Entertainment has a crew split between Los Angeles, Sacramento, and we're headquartered in Ventura County. Okay, and Merman. Yes. Jack. Yes, how are you doing? Hi, how are you? <laughs> Good. <laughs> I'm going to ask you, and then I'll get a little answer from each of you. Who, what made you start something like this? I mean, were you always in the water when you were small? What motivated you? And why did you pick this business out? Um, long story short, uh, it was because I was a professional knight for eight years first. So knight, armor, sword, shields. And past a certain point of working in plate armor in 100 degree weather, you're like, what is the farthest I can get away from this? <laughs> Where did you do this? <laughs> Renaissance fairs. I was actually the first lady knight in the history of the Southern California Renaissance Fair. It's different. And yeah. I worked in film and set and TV in Hollywood and had horses and reenactment societies, everything. But literally one day I was like, I need to take a shower. I'm, I'm in dirt every day. And where can you take a shower all the time? By working in water. <laughs> so <laughs> oh, I was my. like, I want to be a mermaid. And then I've been fortunate enough to build an incredibly good company with people like these two and networked around the world. And it's taken on some amazing adventures, which I'm really, really grateful. Wow, how interesting. How about you, Rachel? I've been a performer and a costumer all my life. Um, my mother was also a seamstress, so okay. I sort of got into it that way. And I started working at the dive bar up in Sacramento about five years ago, which is a bar that has a saltwater aquarium. It's oh, about can you 40 imagine feet. that? I mean, yes. we're eating and they have this big tank there and you well, eat drinking, dinner and see yeah. beautiful <laughs> mermaids swimming around in the tank and doing yeah. beautiful choreography. It's a ton of fun. And through dive bar I met Virginia and we've been, as she said, adventuring <laughs> and exploring where this awesome job opportunity can take us. Ah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Great. And Jack. Yes. I actually Tell grew me. up as a competitive swimmer. So I was always around the water. I come from a family of legitimate sailors and abalone divers. So I was always very involved in the water world. And it just kind of happened being a performer as well in Los Angeles. And you find out some people buy these tales for fun. And I thought, why not make a living out of it? And that's what I've been doing for the past few years with Shiro's. That's it. Now, <laughs> another thing. I was talking to them before the show, which I'm trying to figure this out, and I said, how in the world, when you're in the water, <clears throat> the body keeps going like this, and the tail, doesn't that kill your back? <laughs> you know, and I know you've done everything, you're into mm -hmm. sports, and maybe the Olympics too, I don't know, whatever. <laughs> but uh, explain that, please. Sure. So it's one of those things where you really build up to. I mean, definitely by the end of summer, we've got really great abs. The rest of the year, we're fit, but in the summer, you just are cut. Uh, but honestly, for me, after going from an occupation that I had to wear 40 pounds of armor that was crushing down my spine to all of a sudden being buoyant, that was a miracle. So that's nothing. No. <laughs> when, when you teach it, I mean, I'm sure the people, they mind it. You get into condition, you warm yes. up. I'm sure you do certain exercises with that Absolutely. to train them with the tail. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so at LA Mermaid School, which is a product line of Shiro's Entertainment, we actually did a children's and adults beginning mermaid school this year. And we'll be back for 2016 in the summertime. But with that, we actually did yoga stretches. We did some Pilates work. We did cardio conditioning in the water. Uh -huh. And then we built up to the tail work. So we didn't just put people into that circumstance. Also, our professional tails are a lot heavier the normal beginning tails. So our fabric tails provided by the two tails for the school are only three pounds each. Our tails, my tail's 18. What's yours right now? It's probably yeah. 20. 
because mm -hmm. I asked you about the weight of the tails, how mm -hmm. you do it with the weight and the way you maneuver in the water and everything. Absolutely. So it's really, you build up to it. I actually don't find it to be a problem on my back. After I work out, I'm definitely hungry, just like any <laughs> athlete. Um, and you will periodically, especially this weekend, we were working at Ocean Institute as part of Mermaid Encounter, our joint collaboration uh -huh. with them for Tall Ships Festival. And Mermaid Rachel and I woke up this morning, and we'd been doing so many push-up pop-ups on the tank wall that all of us were like, oh, our arm's going to hurt. <laughs> my stomach hurts, too, actually, from leaning yeah. on the tank. I have bruises so. on my hips. So <laughs> well, tell me, do you follow, like, a vegan diet to no. keep like that? Or do you eat, like, a regular diet, all of you? I think it's a pretty regular diet. I mean, you don't watch healthy. your diet at all? No. I think we try to, to eat healthy as possible, but... I think it's more about making sure you're just eating properly and mm -hmm. just exercising in general and just I don't think there's anything we feel we have to avoid because we just and we getting work enough so much. sleep. Mm -hmm. That's, That's really tricky. critical. <laughs> no, the enough sleep and also enough water. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of people don't realize, oh, you're in water. But the reality is we're in so much sunlight as well as water that we can actually get a bit dehydrated. So one of our key concerns always is, are we drinking enough? Are we getting enough water? Are we wearing our sunblock? Are we wearing shade protection? Uh -huh. Whenever uh -huh. we can get to it, uh -huh. obviously. Because in the middle of a pool, typically there's not an umbrella. But, you know, <laughs> some LA homes. Mm -hmm. so and I did, I was talking to her about the makeup. Mm -hmm. I said, you're in there and you come out so beautiful. It's like <laughs> Esther Williams in the movies years ago and everything. Mm -hmm. And you commented, you use just regular makeup all the time, right? Right. It is waterproof. Um, and Jack's actually worked on a shoot this week. Mm -hmm. So they did airbrush, correct? Yeah, where they actually painted blue scales all over my arms as for a liquor campaign. Yeah. Okay. And mm -hmm. so you have to make sure the makeup is set. And people aren't always used to dealing with waterproof makeup. Okay. So kind of an insider secret is hairspray can help makeup just set and it stays waterproof for a while. Right. And we also use something called Ben Nye Final Seal a lot, mm -hmm. which is a great product. It's used a lot in the cosmetic industry. And it, I like to use it with my waterproof makeup because it just has that extra barrier where it's made for faces. And it can give you a little bit more long time. The other thing is, you know, when we come up, it's surface and smile. It's not wipe your face. <laughs> because if you do that, it's still going to have flake off. Oh, my glory be. And you're, how about your ears? Do your ears plug up when you're underwater that length of time? Don't you have problems with your ears? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> absolutely. So but how do you handle that? Do you put drops mm -hmm. in? or Just simple swimmer's ear every time we get out of the water. Ears pop? Yeah. The, not pop so much. If you go deep enough, you do have to equalize your ears because the pressure builds up and you can actually puncture your eardrums, which is really scary. But one of the things you learn when you're shooting really deep is how to equalize when you're going down and when you're coming back mm -hmm. up. So you go to ENT doctor. To check it out every so often? Um, not unless it's really hurting. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how does it feel? Not too many men are mermen. No, I'm pretty rare breed. You are so. a rare breed in everything, okay? Yeah. What do your friends think of you being a merman? Well, I think the friends that know me think it just actually makes sense <laughs> to be a performer and be creative and just, it's a really wonderful profession because I stay in shape, I make good money, and I get to be creative and create performances and costumes, and it's just, it's a really, really rewarding Certain thing. make people happy. Absolutely. We make a lot of people happy. Yeah, and I did ask him just before the show started, I was laughing to myself, how do you get a relationship and if you're dating, what do you say to the Come people date. on a date? Mm -hmm. <laughs> they ask you, well, w w what do you do? <laughs> well, I, I, I'm a mermaid. And they say, oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Tell me another story, yeah. right? I mean, how would you do that before you met right. your person that you're with now? Yes, well, I actually kind of lucked out because my boyfriend is a professional dancer. Okay. And we met at a big fantasy masquerade ball, the Labyrinth of Jareth masquerade ball, and he works as an elf there. Oh. It's all fantasy. So he immediately understood this world and performances and costumes and the fantasy. And I got very lucky because I didn't have to explain. You have to someone that's so understanding. He got How it about completely. you, Virginia? Um, you, because you date. You're not married. Uh, right. No, I do date. And normally the men that I go out with, they do want to know what I do. And I'm like, oh, I run a party company. And they're like, no, what do you do? Is that princess? Is like, I run a mermaid company. And then it becomes this entire work call. <laughs> 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 and the date's gone, and they're just asking me everything about mermaids. Um, but it's neat because, you know, some people are water guys, and at which point it's great because here's a girl that likes water, is not going to complain about the water, 
And for those guys, it's wonderful. For some of them, they think it's really strange. Normally, if they think it's really strange and aren't in the dress up thing, they're probably not going to last. <laughs> so <laughs> it's kind of a great weeding, you know, just say you're a mermaid the first date. If they're creative, they'll stick around. But you've been with your guy for a really long time. I have, yeah. Before, he was with me before the professional mermaiding happened. Do they ever so. say, do you have time for me today, or do I have my competition, my water? To <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, for me, it's very true. Oh, are they in a creative type business? Is um, he, in... he majored in chemistry, so we're wow. sort of on opposite what a ends of the spectrum. He probably finds what you do very interesting. I think so. That's yeah. for sure. How do your parents feel about it when you mention <laughs> it? What was their remark when you said, I want to have... Uh, a school and I want to be in the mermaid business. How about your family? Um, uh, my parents uh, uh, really stopped questioning my life decisions a couple of <laughs> years <laughs> ago. <laughs> and, Do you remember uh, what they, they said in the beginning? Oh yes, they completely thought that I was crazy and what was I doing with my time huh? and I was always too busy and then all of a sudden I started having a lot of success in my field because I love my field and all of a sudden we're working internationally. And I literally now have one of the biggest mermaid companies in the country, if not the world right now. And one of definitely the hardest working and one of the most successful. So it's a job like anything else. Right. I work crazy hours. Um, I will normally, in any given week, I have a full-time job too. <laughs> so this is on top of it. So I'll work you my 40. You have a full-time job I besides do. this mm -hmm. too? Right, so Are I work 40 two hours. hours a night? <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Um, now, so for the full-time job, it's a 40-hour work week for a corporate uh, company. Uh -huh. And then I do sheroes on top of it. So I just, you know, the dating thing doesn't really happen. Um, but it's really rewarding because I get to work with people like these guys on weekends. And then, you know, go out and as soon as you walk in, the client's so happy. Or not necessarily walk in, wheel in. Uh, <laughs> the client is so happy that it suddenly makes it really a worthwhile life. Wow. And we were talking about getting into this gear, the tails. <laughs> You know, how do you do it? Are you in the water? You change in the water? You change out? If you change out, then you can't stand because you're a tail. Mm -hmm. So if you could tell us, you know, what you told me out there. Mm -hmm. Oh, so with the tails, when we transform into our mermaid versions, right. um, with that, it's a slow process. The first time I learned how to transform into a human uh -huh. and back and forth, it took about an hour. <laughs> I've got it down to about five minutes now. Uh, but uh, the trick is, uh, you know, we never want to transform in front of people because it's awkward. Uh, just like anything, it's kind of like being in skinny jeans from a very bad place. <laughs> so we don't want to be seen, you know, flopping around like a dead right, fish on the right, pool deck. Right. So we normally do it in private, but it's just, it's very delicate. Our tail skin is very, very sensitive, so we don't want to accidentally puncture it. We don't want to distress it because if it, we do, we're not able to go and swim in the ocean. Okay. What do you have around here to make it adhere to the body? <laughs> it's attached to the bra like or what mm -hmm. is how is that done? Or is there elastic around here or what? It's actually a skin type prosthetic basically. It's like a movie quality silicone prosthetic. So they're all fitted to our measurements exactly. So slipping it on with some kind of lubricant, once it's on it is skin skin tight, so it's not gonna come off. Okay. <laughs> and tell us some prices. Certainly. So, in order to have a fairy godmother that's good enough in order to be able to transform you back and forth to a mermaid or merman, <laughs> uh, normally the fairy godmothers charge up to $4,000. So, with that, it's definitely not for the faint of heart. Um, you know, some people pay that price to the fairy godmothers Excuse in order to make me. it. Excuse me. An average person would pay you 4000 for a tail? So, or would uh, there be somebody? Well, we connect? don't. We don't have that ability to make people into mermaids. Um, we actually contract fairy godmothers to do that for okay, us. Okay. Okay. But yes, some people pay four thousand dollars, ten thousand dollars, in order to be able to transform into a mermaid, and it's not cheap. Uh, and the tails are very delicate. We have to be very, very careful with them. Okay. Do you get any reasons from people why they spend that much? and why they do yeah. it. Is their background and their reasoning the same more or less like yours? Do they get no. the thrill out of getting in the water? And what is it that makes mm -hmm. them do that? I think a lot of it is a lifelong passion for Little Mermaid, of all things. Where a lot the of fantasy with mermaids. Yeah. Absolutely. And the unknown, maybe? Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, and then they see this glamorous life on television where it's it looks very glamorous. It's very hard work, but we get to do incredible things, and people are like, oh my gosh, I wish I was part of that world. I wish I was a mermaid to be able to be this incredible thing. And so they will buy the tail hoping to be that because okay. they have a tail. Or alternately, Ariel, Little Mermaid, a lot of people like that movie. And they are like, what would it really be? And could I really be this incredible thing? And it would be just amazing. It's my bucket list. It's my life goal, et cetera. And they really go off on it. What were some of the most interesting reasons you've heard? Um, I think very similar to our stories, mm -hmm. just a love of the water, perhaps people want to work with conservation and uh -huh. helping you know, promote different endangered species or cleaning up beaches or things like that. But I think that part of the expense of the tail is just the materials that it's made out of. That it's a ton of silicone. It's a lot and of money. And it's shiny, the scales yeah. and everything like that. Right. Yeah. And it's just, it's very time consuming. Mm -hmm. I mean, for one of these individuals to be able to make one of these tails, Routine. it can be a year, year and a half wait, mm -hmm. followed yeah. by, you know, it's a, a month of, of production. Mm -hmm. It's a, it's very, very expensive and time consuming. And the people that do it are very good. Well, oh, some of the people that do it are very good. <laughs> we happen to hire some very good ones. <laughs> I want to ask you something. Uh -huh. Has anyone ever said to you or hire you and say, I want a mermaid. I want a mermaid in my tub at home. Yes. Or done the tub, right? Oh, like yeah. Mr. Peabody. <laughs> oh, dub, dub. <laughs> uh, yeah, actually. I want to see a mermaid in my tub just for huh? fun or anything. You have Absolutely. something like that? No, we've done bachelor parties. We've done bachelorette parties. We've done bachelorette with bachelor parties. We've yeah. done lots of kids. And I'm actually talking to a client right now that wants a mermaid in the pool. They want a mermaid in the spa, and they wanted a mermaid walking, and I had to talk to them about the spin thing. doesn't really <laughs> go on land. Yeah, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so uh, it's really the clients dream up something new every day for us, which is part huh. of the fun of the job because we never quite know what adventure is being called in next. And uh, yeah, spas, uh, boats. I've worked open ocean. You know, we worked at dive bar, which is where Rachel yeah. is the lead mermaid. And they do incredible things up there. They actually have an upcoming underwater show where it's choreographed and everything. And mm -hmm. she's a lead on that. Yeah. And we're working with Shiro. Probably. They would take you out on the boat mm -hmm. and drop you in the water. Yes. <laughs> and probably a boat would come by. Did you have anything like that? Act mm -hmm. anything out? And people would say, oh my God. Look what I see. And one person said, oh, no, it can't be a mermaid. Oh, but it's, oh, a, it's a mermaid. in the water. Uh, yes, How about I that have. one? Excuse me. You told me that they put you in the water and you went a couple of miles in the ocean. No, well, we were a couple of uh, miles out in the ocean. I actually did a wonderful charity called Fish for Life, okay. which takes disabled children and their families out fishing on a fishing trip, uh -huh. where it's with the Department of uh, Fish and Wildlife that then grants all those kids a license to keep whatever they catch. So obviously not something endangered, but most of these kids are not catching endangered fish. So as part of that, the grand finale was I worked with a support boat and a team of rescue divers where I was dropped off coastline and I did an open water swim by mm -hmm. around the boat. Mm -hmm. So waving and tail flipping and just saying hi to the kids. And it was really, really special. I mean, they really remembered it, and it was so beautiful. It was a yeah, you can never facility. forget anything like that. And it's good because you do charities, you do these things, and you did something for our, you said SPCA. Uh, you were talking about the yeah, animals. that was dive bar. We did an adoption event where we had That's kittens and puppies all over mermaids. Adorable. It was <laughs> adorable. That is a good thing. To <laughs> and be then known Jax also this year did Make a Wish. He was yeah. one of the ground support leads for Make a Wish. We had a mermaid, a princess, and a pirate, and a mermaid, a pear tree for that one. <laughs> and he was gracious enough to be on land coordinating all that to make sure that the kids that had that wish were able to get it fulfilled. It was amazing because they had a whole section of costume characters and professional athletes, just a really wide range of people, and the line that was a mile long was to meet the mermaid, the pirate. Mm -hmm. So, Now, when you have children one day, mm -hmm. would you do this with your children too and everything? It, if they liked it. Okay. I mean, it, you it, wouldn't push them, I mean, or anything, no. right? Or direct them. Uh, They'd probably say, well, my mommy's a mermaid, or my dad is a merman. <laughs> That's it. Go to school and everything. Actually, one of my friends is a professional fairy. She runs one of the biggest fairy companies, of all things, in the country. And her little boy is going through a rebellious stage right now saying that nothing is fake and nothing is fantasy. It's all real and that's fake. And that's his rebellion because she runs one of the most beautiful fairy companies in the world. Okay. So uh, with me, I think it's one of those things where
where every child needs to pick their path. So if they don't like water, that's fine. I, I like motorcycles, let's do motorcycles. <laughs> um, or something that would be more fun. But okay. I'm assuming you're the same way. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. What's the most unusual request that you have had <laughs> since you've been in the business? Unusual <laughs> <There's laughs> <a lot. laughs> or different? <laughs> Can we say it on the air? Can we say it while we do it? Oh, where do we start? Um, <laughs> you can yeah. break it down. Uh, well, I'm working with one client that wanted to have a unicorn, uh, doing unicorn rides in her living room uh, this week. And I'm working with her on the, an alternate situation that that would be able to be provided in. Because I love unicorns. Uh, we have unicorns on call, okay. I figure. Uh, but it's just not quite safe for the unicorn to, because of the horn. You yeah, don't want yeah, the horn right, to actually right. hit the ceiling because it might hurt. So we're trying to find an alternate suggestion so they can do unicorn rides um, when they're not at the pool, but probably not in the house. Okay, she probably wanted the unicorn because that's supposed to be like a fantasy and hope oh, absolutely. and magical. They're completely you know, magical. They have glitter hoof polish. Unicorns. She can't beat that. <laughs> <laughs> Any others? Anything else? That's kind uh, of I think different. one of the strangest things I had happen to me at an event was somebody tried to carry off the mermaid. <laughs> like sort of the party favor, you know, like, oh, this must be for me, and start well, carrying you couldn't do off. too much for yourself except for your arm. Exactly. <laughs> they thought that went with the whole thing. It That's did. the end. Well, I get a mermaid, too. Yeah. I see the show, and I walk away with a mermaid it was perfect. and everything. Right. Yeah. We've also done, uh, actually, both of us have done engagements, mm -hmm. where she just did one last week in Sonoma, where that went beautifully. Yeah, it was wonderful. They had me swim the ring box over to the couple through the water which was really, really fun. Oh, how mm -hmm. nice. How wonderful. Has anyone asked you, like, we want to get married in the water? No, not yet. It's a matter of time, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. uh, we've actually done a pirate wedding with a pirate officiant. So I helped a client with that last year where it was a lesbian couple that were getting married. And they wanted to have a pirate-themed wedding, and they wanted their pirate ceremony to be done by a pirate. So I happen to have an on-call list of mermaid ministers and pirate pastors. Like you do. Uh -huh. Like you do. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, we actually sent out one of the pirates, um, and he did an exceptional job. And they had a wonderful time. They got married under the pier. So the fact that we've had mermaid ring delivery and pirate uh, uh, ceremonies, I, it's a matter of time. And because I'm a scuba diver, I can do that. You know, let's just have it underwater. Sounds great. <laughs> But could you have the two people marry under the water? It's the breathing they couldn't do. Uh, at it the time. We could we could make it happen. Uh, we've got enough resources in our company that we could actually logistically make it happen for them. So okay. if anyone wants to get married. <laughs> <laughs> we do instant marriages underneath in the water. <laughs> Absolutely. We can make this happen. Yeah, but that would yeah. be delightful. I'd actually you have the instant marriages you could do like they do in Vegas. Oh, speaking of Vegas, uh -huh. do you work Vegas? The shows? Um, we've got I'm sure you have. Right? Uh, not yet. We've had a couple inquiries. Jax actually has had a couple contacts out there. And I think it's a matter of time. We're slowly branching out the atmosphere because we're working so heavily in Southern California. It is actually hard just to get away to get away from our normal gigs. So yeah, there is interest and things are developing, but right now we're so happily busy in Southern mm -hmm. California. Oh, I should think somebody would grab you. Like they would have a setup, an aquarium there. Like they had a setup for Siegfried and Roy with mm -hmm. their animals. The Mirage is actually spectacular. I love that, that they hotel. would have that there. If yeah, I should think it would be a big hit. Uh, we had a huge draw, actually, at Ocean Institute. We had a similar client uh, where, for Ocean Institute, it's a very children's family aquarium education provider down Dana Point. And they reached out to us as a client this year as saying they really wanted a reason for people to not only go to the Tall Ships Festival, but to get in their building. Because the ticket sales all go back to their educational programming. Mm -hmm. So they hired my company, and I had these two on the tank with me. And their ticket sales are through the roof. And it's one of their most successes. We literally had lines wrapping around the building waiting to get in. And that was with, we had three, four mermaids working all weekend plus two pirates. But it was that huge. So clients are looking to us a lot of times for, can you please get people to notice me, get people to cover me. The OC Register did an incredible feature on us this week. Mm. So oh, it's really, really God. nice. Okay, now your school. Mm -hmm. okay. LA Mermaid School. Is that in Venice? Yes, this year it was in Venice Beach, okay. California. Okay, what do you do when someone comes in? How do you talk to them when they say, I, I want to take classes, mm -hmm. I want to become a mermaid? What are your first instructions to them? 
Sure. Well, normally when I was working with clients, uh, with LA Mermaid School, just due to general ability levels, we had ages six and up where we had a lot of disappointed four-year-olds and five-year-olds, but we've just found that age six is where they start really becoming uh, stamina driven enough to be able to do really well in class. Uh -huh. So we let all the parents know up front very heavily on the phone on the website that they had to be able to swim two laps in a pool and tread water for two minutes. That if, no matter what age that person was, if they were not able to do that, they should wait and they should go invest the time in the swim classes because we really promote water safety. Half my team is lifeguards. I'm a lifeguard. And it's really, really critical to us that kids are not only having fun in the water with us, but they're safe in the water for us. So mm -hmm. we had some kids and we actually helped their parents to find a swim school to mm -hmm. go to. And they're training up. But um, that was at 800 Main in Venice Beach, California, and it's a spectacular location. It's one of the best event places I've ever seen. It's got a pool all the way down it. Wow. You have the parents and the kids go together and they take classes Some of together? Them. Yes, we actually had uh, Mermaid and Me, as I was calling them. <laughs> and we did have some moms and daughters or uh, nieces, actually. They'd surprise their niece and go as a family thing. Okay, and also daddies probably with their daughters too at the same time. Uh, we unfortunately didn't have any dads, but we did have a lot of dates. So we had a couple of um, dates just bring their date out as a surprise thing about, hey, honey, we're going to mermaid school today. That's and a different date, yeah. <laughs> those clients How much were is it? so what, what fun. Do you what do you charge? Sure. So the classes were running between forty and fifty dollars. We've ended for this season because again we're still in high season, where the crew was so booked that we just don't have the time to take off for classes right now. But it was 40 or $50, it was for an hour and 15 minutes at LA Mermaid School, where literally we provided the rental tails, they didn't have to have a tail, they just came and we started from the very beginning about how to do it, how to do it safely, and then drills that would then build their strength. So after about an hour and 15 minutes, by no means were they professional, but at the end of it they were a good deal more confident and safer in doing it. You have your own world. It's your own world. I mean, how yes. you do all of that and everything. Mm -hmm. it, it's so amazing. Uh, and getting back to uh, the costumes and the instructions, mm -hmm. are they more interested in what you wear, the questions like the kids, when they first meet you? Oh, no. What do they ask you when they first meet you? Oh, everything. <laughs> what, um, what do they ask, me, Rachel? What they, they don't start off with the tails. Usually you just get the big yes, eyes, right. sort of like, a real mermaid, and they ease into things. But I get a lot of questions about what do mermaids eat, mm -hmm. and who are your That's friends under the ocean? That's what I ask you the yeah. 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 Lots of things. Who are your sea friends under the ocean? I get, you know, Ariel a lot. Yes. <laughs> As we yeah. do. Okay, and I'm sure they ask you about the seahorses, maybe? Do you ever see seahorses, your friends in the ocean? Yes, well, seahorses are company logo. So the Shiro is the S is a seahorse. But we teach them a lot about different animals. They ask about sharks a lot. Mm -hmm. They ask a lot fish. They, like, they love asking about dolphins, because uh -huh. everyone loves dolphins. Uh -huh. But it's really across the board about how does your face paint start on to how do you do what games. I could go on and talking, talking to you forever and ever. Have you s ever swam with a dolphin? Not yet, life? but I can't wait. I think you have. You I have not, but lots of ocean life in the open ocean. Mm -hmm. Jellyfish, recently. Lots sea of turtles. Jellyfish. Sea turtles, yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. And sea lions, and lots of fish. Sea a lot of fish. Sea lions. Have you seen any sea lions in the water? Oh, they're beautiful. They're like big really? dogs. <laughs> oh, when you're down there, it must be so beautiful at the bottom of the ocean. That's off our coastline. Oh, That's why we do wow. it. Wow. They see you in the tank and everything. So you're in the tank in San Francisco, right? Sacramento. Oh, Sacramento. Mm -hmm. And that's The it. dive bar. And our... I know you're doing commercials mm -hmm. and a lot of other things, mm -hmm. and this lady is here holding the fort together to do so <laughs> many Somehow, things. Yeah. Somehow, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Herding fish. What would you like to do that you haven't done your passion in this type of business? That's a great question. I am honestly just enjoying where it is right now. I'm enjoying the character development and more than anything I'm just enjoying working with clients. Do you have a dream of doing something else? Have you ever thought of that? I, uh, For me it's going on an adventure and with my life right now I go to an adventure every day. I mean I can't ask for more. Your than life that. is an adventure. My life is an adventure and that's exactly the way I want to live it. Yeah, it's certainly not a bit dull anyhow. <laughs> anyhow, like I said, I'd love to have you back again some other time. Maybe okay, tonight. and we'll see what's going on in your 
world of water. Okay. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, I wanted to ask him also at the same time, Merman, hmm. when did you start the Merman? When you started the business, Virginia, mm -hmm. it wasn't Merman, right? It was no. just the females? Uh, yes, it was just females originally, and uh, Merman and Jacks actually met at an event, and I was so impressed with his professionalism at the event that we stayed in contact, and I looked for a way to bring him in. Oh, so okay. uh, he probably came in our second year. Mm -hmm. Yeah, okay. and she's provided so many amazing opportunities for him, from commercials to amazing parties and just like she said every event is a new adventure so to even think about what else could we still do every time we have an event it's something it's something mm -hmm. new so, so it's always exciting <laughs> I think if you like determine I want to do this then it closes your mind and with us if we keep it open then all of a sudden something new happens and we're off to something fun mm. well anyhow Virginia has a beautiful name she uses she's a Catalina <laughs> Catalina mermaid yeah was that any do with Catalina Island? It is exactly to do yeah. with Catalina Island. I live under the Avalon Casino building, and I love swimming in Catalina Island and pesking around with all the scuba divers. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you again. It was wonderful having you on. Okay, Lorraine, just thank you. wonderful. Thank you. And uh, I thank the Channel 36, and here we are back again. Like I said, join us again. Thank you, Rachel. Virginia and Jack. Thank you. A pleasure.